know, if Pisces and the 12th house represent the transpersonal, the spiritual, you know, we are in this space of collectivity. Everyone is good. There's no discernment. I love everyone. And I can connect it with everyone, but it's not personal. How she shared that she was on a journey and she met a person and they 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 went on a hike together and it was a great exchange, but they didn't bother asking each other's name. That's very Piscean. You know, it's part of this fact that we are in the same boat and who cares if your name is Julian or Margaret. And then you move on to your next phase and that's, you know, there's no commitment, there's no attachment. Cancer, on the other hand, is extremely personal. It's emotional, an emotional means attached. Necessarily so. Cancer is the sign of our identity. You know, I am an astrologer. I am a man. I am an American. All these emotional attachments mean that if I am an astrologer, I'm attached to astrology. I care for astrology. I study astrology. I teach it. If I'm attached to my family, I'm going to call them. I'm going to find out if they're healthy. I'm going to, you know, we're going to support each other. So there's a commitment in that attachment. But the risk of cancer is over-attachment, is not being able to let go. So where Pisces lets go too easily sometimes, cancer can be too attached sometimes. Which one is better? They're both necessary equally. Then Scorpio is kind of the bridge between both because Scorpio experiences the attachment, but also learn through the crisis of over, you know, excessive emotional involvement. Scorpio learns about the pains of loss and the grief of separation and death. Right? Scorpio is the sign of death. What is death teaching you? It's exactly that threshold between attachment and release. As you know, you know, looking at the natural wheel, There's a natural polarity between the six and the 12. And I just want to recap this as we went through our journey through the lower hemisphere. Um, the life of a raw diamond. So <clears throat> life begins in the 12th house where everything is provided, nature, weather, higher forces, higher meanings. We are basically part of this larger organism, larger intelligence, larger process. And we are in the 12th house stage <clears throat> without an individual consciousness. We just are. And we are part of everything. That also means that everything operates through us. So everything in the 12th house is at its raw, crude, primal state. It's nothing has changed it. Nothing has intervened. 
but the natural processes of life. This is why the 12th house is actually related to geology, to nature in its raw form. Um, you know, we talked about the jungle versus the manicure gardens. Um, in a way, any place that hasn't been touched by humans or, or barely that hasn't been developed is part of that 12th house, Pisces, Neptune archetype. Um, and this is where many Piscean people can feel drawn to these places because it reconnects them to their own primal self. You know, the, there's a this is part of the reason why Piscean people want to go back to this uh, virginal environment, you know, be on a wild beach, you know, sleep under the stars, um, be naked, and not in a sexual way, just in a natural way. So going back to this place where of origin, you know, it's Pisces and the 12th house is timeless. But if we go back to, you know, in the context of our time space reality, it is actually the place of origin. So the need to come back to simplicity, the need to come back to the basic, to, to the, the values that we once had. This is why there's always an appeal to connect with uh, cultures or tribes, usually indigenous to a particular environment, who are going to live very simply, very close to the land, very close to the elements. So there's a yearning for that. Whereas the other archetypes, and particularly the polarity of Virgo, you know, brings human intervention into the picture where we modernize, we polish, we develop, you know, we, we build shelter, we build dams, and animals do too, you know, it's not just humans. Maybe humans have the most influence, but we know that animals are also, you know, doing their thing. If you see an elephant going through a forest, they will cut, you know, they will down the trees. If you see a beaver, they will be industrious and build dams. So any living creature is going to be part of the ecosystem in managing it, using resources, digging dens and holes and whatnot. Um, but it is still you know, relatively minimal compared to clearing forest for agriculture or building cities. When, you know, now that Neptune has been in Pisces for so long, you know, we're at the tail end of it, you see also how there's a strong movement of people who want to live off grid who want to get out of the rat race, who want to live simply, who are, you know, returning to the wild, rewilding human nature. 